Previously, we looked at finding the area between a curve and the axis by using integration. Now we'd like to generalize that by finding the area between two curves using the integral. So starting off, let's say f and g are continuous on an interval from a to b. And let's say that f is always greater than or equal to g. So let's sketch a quick picture of this. Now, I'm just drawing arbitrary curves here. You could draw whatever you want. The key is I want to make them continuous, and I want f and g such that f is always greater than or equal to g. So I'll draw some curve f. And say, this is g. And we're going to be interested in that area in between from A to B. All right. Now remember for area, the first thing we did was partition that interval. So I'll put some marks here on the axis to represent our partition. And let's just consider one of our subintervals here. If we draw one of our subintervals and generalize it, then we can see what would happen on all of our subintervals. So, say this is um, x sub k minus 1 and x sub k, as we've done. And c sub k is some arbitrary point in between. Now, as always, in integration, the idea is you take something that's changing and assume it's constant over a small interval. So here, this function we assume is constant over our subinterval, and this function we assume is constant over our subinterval. And then we've got this approximating rectangle. whose dimension here is delta x sub k, and whose height is the difference in the two functions. Now this is where it's key that f always be bigger than or, or equal to g, because how we calculate this distance is larger minus smaller, right? So this distance is whatever f at c sub k is minus g at c sub k. This statement's only true if f is the bigger function. So when we're doing this integral, we'll have to pay attention to what's the larger function. All right, so what is the area of this rectangle? Well, it's the kth rectangle. I'm going to call it a sub k. And it's just a rectangle, so it's base times height. The height there is our f at c sub k minus our g at c sub k times the width, which is delta x sub k. Now, we would have n of these rectangles here, right? So if we add up those n rectangles over those n subintervals, we would get an approximation for our total area. Remember, we're interested in the area between these curves. So the area between the curves is approximately the sum of our n rectangles. And then as we saw before with just area under the curve, 
we would like to shrink these rectangles and make them skinnier and skinnier so that they better and better approximate that area. So we take the limit as the norm of our partition goes to zero of the sum of all of our rectangles. Now, this limit is saying let all of your rectangles get skinnier and skinnier. Remember, we can't just say let n go to infinity because we allow each rectangle to have a different width. And just making more rectangles does not guarantee that they all shrink down in their width. This statement is just a fancy way of saying make all of those widths head down to zero. Specifically, it says have the largest width head to zero, and if the largest width is heading to zero, all the widths are heading to zero. Okay, now that, by definition, is just the definite integral. So let me write out the details of what the a sub k's are. f of c sub k minus g at c sub k times delta x sub k. That then is our integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x delta x. And this is only true if f is bigger than g. And let me do that. So, so long as these are continuous functions and f is the larger one, the area between them is simply the integral from a to b of the larger function minus the smaller function. Now, one question you might have is how do we know that as these shrink down, our approximation, which remember this is just an approximation, what guarantees that this actually becomes the exact area? Well, that's where the continuity up there comes in. Remember from Calc 1 we had this thing called the extreme value theorem. So we know that on this subinterval there will be a time when the difference in these two functions is maximum and when it's minimum. So depending on your c sub k, you could get everything in between there. So no matter what c sub k you pick, they'll all be trapped between one maximal and one minimal. And the key is that as you shrink down, both that max and that min converge on each other. But all other measures are trapped in between there. So no matter how you partition this, and no matter what c sub k's you pick, all partitions, all c sub k's, this limit heads to the real area because the real area is trapped in there with all those. So we know, based on the fact that f and g are, con are continuous, that this will happen. Next time, we'll look at an actual example of how we would do this integration to find the area between two curves.